and welcome to Ask an Author. Today we have a very special guest, Elisa Dallitson. Welcome. Hello, great to see you. Great to see you too. I have got so many questions that kids have sent in today. This is my very special book that I write down. <laughs> oh, it's very special. <laughs> and do you think you're brave enough to answer questions that the kids have sent in? I don't know. I'll, I'll give it a shot. We'll see how we go. Good. I'm sure you're very brave. Okay. So Emma wants to know, did you like books as a kid? Yes. Um, I loved books. I used to get in trouble for reading so much. I was what you'd call a bookworm and I'd be inside on a beautiful sunny day reading, reading, reading. I was just absolutely addicted to it. Books have always been a huge part of my life. So yes, Emma, I have always loved books. Oh, that's awesome. And James wants to know, how do you get ideas for your books? Uh, yeah, um, I guess I would say that ideas are all around us. As an author, I've constantly got ideas bombarding me. It's choosing the good ones that can turn into a story. That's the problem. But I think if you keep your eyes, your ears and your mind open, um, you'll spot the ideas out and about. Um, and if you maybe have a notebook or if you're old enough to have a phone, you can um, record your notes on that to use for later. But um, always have your ideas in a notebook so they're nice and handy for you to use whenever you need them, basically. And it's a great excuse to go and buy a really fun notebook too, isn't it? It is. It's got <laughs> piles and piles of notebooks. Not as cute as yours. <laughs> unicorns and llamas on notebooks. But um, uh, nothing beats the fresh opening of that brand new notebook. Uh, totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, Liam wants to know, where have you travelled to? Um, I've traveled to a few places overseas, not as many places as I would like to have traveled. I didn't go overseas until I was about 20, I think it was, 19, 20. And my first, the first place I went to was Malaysia with a Malaysian friend of mine. And we went to Penang and Kuala Lumpur. That was amazing. I've been to Turkey and Greece. Oh my goodness. Just absolutely beautiful places. All the history and the landscapes of Turkey were incredible. The troglodyte cities, you know, little fairy, um, the fairy, uh, what do they call them? Sorry? Tarot sort of things. Yeah, yeah. People used to live in them. It was just incredible. Um, so I took lots of photos there and I actually used those travels and those photographs as the basis for some of my stories. Um, I've been to England very briefly and I went and saw Phantom of the Opera at uh, Piccadilly Circus. I've been to Wales. I've been to Paris, France, and a little bit out into the countryside of France, but I was able to go up the Eiffel Tower. I was able to go into the Cathedral of Notre Dame, which was just amazing. I was able to go and see the Mona Lisa Oh, I've been to America as well, America and Canada. So a few places, New Zealand, um, really interesting places. I think when I travel, I go with um, maybe a childlike mind, but a really open mind. I'll do a little bit of research about the place before I go. I'll usually create my own itinerary. And that way you can kind of go places where not every other tourist has been as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go places that kind of interest you. Maybe you can do a bit of research for a book as well. But um, you just go with such an open mind, and everything is just so amazing, incredible, and, wow. and wonderful and new. So I absolutely love travel. It's a shame we can't do more of it at the moment. I know. But yes. there's plenty of places in Australia to go as well that I haven't explored. You know. Yes. Mm. Do you do you have a favourite place, or is it too hard to pick? Um. I think probably Turkey was one of my favourite places. It was just an amazing experience. We even went on a bus where you know normal Turkish people went, not the tourist buses. So we were, I, I was trying to, uh, for various reasons, we had to communicate with people. We didn't know Turkish. We had our little um, guidebooks out and we're trying to talk to them. They're so friendly, such beautiful, beautiful people. Uh, and just, yeah, the incredible landscapes. That was such an adventure and so much fun. I didn't get to, a chance to do a gap year or backpacking when I was younger you know like some people go overseas for a whole year or two years which just must be so incredible so any travel I've done it's been really special wow. um, but in Australia you know we go bushwalking and stuff and I will go to a different place and I'll be fascinated with things in Australia and think I've never walked on this land before I've never touched this tree or seen this bird ever before and that kind of newness 
um, really inspires me and excites me. And I think that's kind of the same feeling you get when you open a new book as well. Um, what you're going to experience is totally new, totally different, and you can learn so many things. So mm. I think you can tell I get excited by travel. <laughs> yes, yes. Those are great questions. Thank you, Liam. I think it's the same when you start a new story. Like you never know where it's going to take you as well when you're writing it. Absolutely, absolutely. And sometimes when that story flows, it's just a beautiful feeling, yeah. It sure is. Now, Harper would like to know, do you have any hobbies? Harper, I do have some hobbies besides reading. Uh, I try to go to as many llama farms as possible. I love animals. Um, I've always been surrounded by animals and have them in my life. So anything to do with animals, so I'm obsessed with, I would go to zoos and, you know, wildlife parks and that sort of thing. I love going to the beach. We have a little dog, a tenterfield terrier called Lexi. So we take her to a beach up near where we live and she gets to roam around and have a swim and play with the other dogs. And we get to have a bit of a walk there. Um, I love tennis as well and golf. I quite like those and I really do need to try and get better at them. <laughs> <laughs> and do you find that like, like getting out and doing those hobbies, does that help you with your writing? It does, particularly walking. Um, and anything where you're moving and allowing your brain to just imagine things or dream about things and, and think about things, have things filter through your mind. So those kind of hobbies, apart from the fact they keep you active, I mean, as an author, um, I have to sit at my desk doing a lot of writing and also a lot of administration and marketing, etc. So I'm at my desk a lot, like a lot of people are, kids and adults. So having that movement in our bodies and that fresh air, that really does open up your mind to other things as well and makes you fresher for when you need to sit down again for those long periods of time. Yeah. Absolutely. That is so cool. Um, Abby wants to know what makes you laugh? Ha. <laughs> um, questions from Abby make me laugh. Um, <laughs> uh, my kids, when they're not making me cry, they're usually making <laughs> me laugh. Any kids that I visit at schools, oh my goodness, the funny things they come out with. They are just absolutely adorable. Laugh Armors make me laugh. Um, there's a few comedians that I really like as well, like Jerry Seinfeld. And there's some really great shows on TV, like Parks and Recreation, The Office. My kids have watched The Office and Parks and Recreation. Like, it's on an endless loop. Hundreds <laughs> of times. We know the words off by heart. Oh, and um, what's the other show? Oh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Now, I got the kids onto that, and then they've just run with it. They absolutely love it. I just think it's the funniest thing. So I, I like other people and comedy, comedians making me laugh, and animals, I think, and kids. They make me laugh. Yeah. Yeah. I've just started on Parks and Recreation, actually. I'm only, like two episodes in, so I'll have to let you know how I go. <laughs> um, there's pl plenty of merchandise that you might be able to buy and wear as well. My daughter even made an office Monopoly board. <laughs> so I know she planned it all out and drew it, illustrated, got all the cards. She's that obsessed. So it must, wow. be, good. It must be good. It must be really good. Um, Bella wants to know, do you have a favourite book character? A favourite book character? Um... From when I've read other books, yes, um, I would have uh, Lucy from The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. That would be one of my choices. Katniss Everdeen as well from um, uh, The Hunger Games. The Hunger Games, that's right. I'm thinking Mockingjay, Mockingjay. Um, <laughs> the Hunger Games, definitely. I like how she was strong and empowered. Um, I, I also read a lot of historical fiction when I was a kid. So you know, not many people would know Alexander Cordell, who's a very famous English uh, author, but I was obsessed with his characters. Um, and characters that I've written about, I would say probably my favourite is Philippe Lamar from The League of Llamas, and then Quinn from, um, Quinn and Crystal from The Unicorn Riders. They're my two favourite characters out of that series as well. What is it about them that you love so much? Um, I think because they are, they work in a team and they're strong and empowered as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, these female, female role models, but Quinn, she's small, she's petite, she's very young, but she's very clever. So you can't underestimate her. And I love those kind of characters who are very small and um, underestimated. There's, um, I'm reading Patrick Ness's Burn at the moment. It's got dragons in it. It's, it's quite mind blowing. It's got multiverses, all this sort of thing. Wow. And there's a small dragon in that. 
and he's underestimated. But, you know, you can never really underestimate a dragon, can you? Or you shouldn't. <laughs> I don't think you should, really. No. <laughs> um, Maddie wants to know, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, I wanted to be so many things and it changed all the time. I initially wanted to be a vet and then I actually did um, two weeks work experience in a veterinary clinic and it probably wasn't as glamorous uh, as I thought it would be or working with wildlife as much. We had lots of dogs and cats um, and I kind of shifted focus a little bit there because I just loved animals so much. I did consider being a zookeeper. I wanted to be a geneticist. I wanted to study genes and be a scientist. I don't think that, that um, plan lasted very long. I didn't actually think that you could be an author and make a career out of it. Everyone said to me at 16, I won a writing competition. And I said to everyone, I wanna be an author. I've, I've won this competition, $10,000 worth of computers. This is amazing. People give you things for writing stories. And everyone said, it's too hard, you'll never make it. Um, so I went and studied uni instead. But you know, that dream to be an author, I felt that it was always just a dream, just a hobby, like the golf and the tennis. And it's not until you start practicing that things actually do get better for you and you develop your skills. So it took me a long time to come back to the writing as a career. And I guess asking a lot of questions and doing a lot of workshops to learn how to be a good writer. Wow. It's so amazing that it was just so kind of part of you that you couldn't ignore it. It, it came back to be, to come true. It did. I mean, I was always writing in the background, like constant, I was working sometimes two jobs, full-time jobs, um, day and night. And it, in any spare moment I had, I was writing, but I thought this is just a hobby. It's just to release, it's just a creative thing. But something also in my mind was just tapping there and going, you need to get your name on books. You only get one chance in life. You've got to give it a go. So eventually I was able to find the space in my life to be able to give it a go. And thank goodness I did. <laughs> thank goodness you did because yes. you released all of those amazing books out into the universe and made a lot of kids very, very happy. Yes, so, <laughs> books later, 50 yeah. books later. I mean, unbelievable, crazy, crazy. Yeah. And Charlie wants to know what's the best part about what you do? Charlie, uh, the best part about what I do is that in, often I can be my own boss. If I want to write about a character, I can write about them. If I want to champion the cause of a specific animal or person, you know, I can write about that and I have freedom in what I write and luckily a lot of what I write also works out in the general public. I can sit at home in my PJs and write if I want. I do quite like being by myself but as an author you have to be that Gemini as you know Michelle mm -hmm. and also be the presenter. Um, oh being an author you do also get to travel usually and you get to talk to a lot of people so you can be so many different things. You can go into these magical worlds that you create and you can make anything happen and have that freedom to do so. And then you can join back into the real world and connect with real people, with your stories, things that came from your heart, your mind, your soul. You know, this is you that you put on a page and that you share with people and that's pretty special. So I think I'm pretty lucky to be an author. Absolutely, there's not many jobs where you can do that, is there? No, no. <laughs> No, <laughs> I would recommend everyone tries to be an author and they always say that, you know, everyone has a book in them uh, and a lot of people leave it probably a little bit late. They write a memoir at the end of their life. Why can't we write our story, you know, when we're 10 or 12 or 15? Lots of things happen to us that are worth writing about and sharing. Yep, totally agree. Totally agree. Now, um, Georgia wants to know if you had one wish, what would you wish for? A thousand more wishes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited wishes. I don't think you're allowed to do that. I know. The genie says no to that. If I could, um, besides making sure that everyone was safe and happy and well in the world, um, I think I think that would be a really good wish, wouldn't it? You know, mm. more more happiness. Let's go for more happiness and more happiness. I think that's important. Um, and some of us have happiness right under our noses, right at our fingertips, right in our lives, and we don't 
stop to appreciate it. You know, there is beauty outside just in the sky, just looking at those beautiful clouds and the sunsets or the trees or the birds. And I don't think we appreciate those tiny little moments, those tiny little things that are there just waiting for us. And that's why sometimes we miss those happy, happy things, happy moments. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting very philosophical. <laughs> I, I just love the way you see things. And I think it comes across a lot in, in the way that you write books. Like you can take something that other people could seem quite ordinary, but you just see it through these eyes of wonder. And it, it always comes across in your stories that you, you can kind of put a, a spin on things and make people think about things a different way. And I think that's one of the power that's the power of what you do and, and the power of what you can do as an author. So for all of the kids watching who think, you know what, I love writing stories and maybe I might like to be an author when I grow up, what advice would you have for them? I think just give it a try. Um, write down the things that affect you and the things that make you happy, the things that you want to share. And don't let anyone ever say that, you know, you can't be a writer or you can't achieve your dreams. Uh, I let people say that to me and I believe them and they were wrong. And I was naive to believe that. So you just have to believe in yourself and give it a shot uh, and, and share your work, share your voice. Everyone is important and has a special story to tell. And I think it is about finding the joy in life isn't it you know mm. we all have to do that yep find your joy yep find your joy that's amazing now i'm sure kids watching have got a lot more questions now that they'd like to ask you what's the best way that they can get in contact with you uh they can go to my website which is elisadarlison.com uh they can drop me an email elisadarlison at yahoo.com uh, but just find me at my website i'm also on facebook you can find me Pretty easily, Elisa Darlison is quite an unusual name, difficult for people to spell, A-L-E-E-S-A-H. Um, so there's not many of us. Which yes. Is really good. Yes. You are unique. You are. I, I, I try to be. I try to be. <laughs> what I might do is I'll, I'll put all those details in the description of the video. So I'll pop the link there to your, your website and your Facebook page and, and the spelling and everything. So and if kids do want to get in contact with you and ask you some more questions or maybe tell you how much they love your books, that they could get in contact with you. Elisa, send thank me a story, send me a joke, send me any messages you would like. I'm always here to chat you get a direct line to an author which is an amazing <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us today and just sharing the way that you see the world i, I love it and, and i really appreciate you for doing that and inspiring kids to do the same get out there and see the world through your own eyes so thank you so much for being with us today thank you michelle it's been a pleasure and lovely to chat to everyone Yay! So if you would like to hear more interviews from authors, make sure you hit that subscribe button and we will see you next time on Ask an Author. Bye!